so after all the ups and downs, we finally finished this eight bedroom HMO in Nottingham. In this video, I'm gonna give you the full numbers breakdown. I'm gonna show you the before and after photos and hopefully someone can learn on how they can do it themselves. Right guys, so the layout of this property is it's an open plan living kitchen area. So obviously this is the living area. And then the kitchen comes all the way around here. And to be honest, I'm very happy with the kitchen. We had a really good build team that actually worked on this project for us and they did a great job. The finish of this one, I'm very happy with it. There's still some slight snagging to do, but the decorator's coming back to finish that off. But as we can see, we've got two ovens here, two hubs, and we've got two sinks as well. So we've got basically two of everything to satisfy the HMO requirements. For those of you that don't know, HMO stands for House of Multiple Occupants basically a shared house. So with this property, we did not need a full planning application because it's an eight bed HMO, but it was pretty smooth. Um, they actually got approved pretty much straight away. So we was happy with that, of course, because a lot of the time when you're trying to do bigger HMOs, it doesn't always happen that smoothly. So let me show you the layout of this, this one here. So this is obviously living area, kitchens over there, and then we've got two bedrooms and we've got a bathroom. So. This is one of the bathrooms, as we can see, we pretty much followed the same model of, you know, the interior where we did, you know, the black finishes, the nice tiles. And then we've got two bedrooms right here. So this is bedroom number one. So guys, this is bedroom number one. We just need to fit the curtains here. This actually leads to outside, which I will show you. Um, but this is obviously the bedroom, wardrobe, desk area. So kept it nice and simple. Let me show you outside. So guys, this is all an extension. So all of this here was not here before. We actually did a double story rear extension on this property. And then we've then rendered it and then painted it white. So super happy with the finish. These are outdoor lights that we just like to put on. They're on a sensor. So when people are outside in the dark, these will come on automatically. The extension stopped about here. However, we've rendered it all so it, it's all matching. And then obviously kitchen's in there. This leads to bedroom number two, which is the other downstairs bedroom. And we've just kept it simple. We're not fully finished on this garden. We want to put a bit more outdoor seating and stuff, but we'll do that. Let's go back in. This is bedroom number two. The one thing I do like about this bedroom is actually the wall paneling. So as you can see here, we've done this wall paneling. We've then painted it white and I'm happy with it. I think it looks great. Super happy. Two downstairs bedrooms. And then we've got this nice little sofa area, which I'm happy with. I think it looks cool. Um, later on in this video, I'm going to explain how you can create large HMOs as well, because I do think it's important to learn how to do this. I'm not just here trying to show what I've done. I want to show how you can do it too. Right, let me show you bedroom number three. So this is bedroom number three. I'm very tempted to jump on this bed and just get comfy and have a little nap because I love to have naps, but I'm not going to do that right now. Today is all about helping you guys. So. Here, this one leads out to the garden where we just was. And yeah, this is a bigger size room. So as you can see, the size of the room, I believe this one's about 12 square meters. So it's a decent size. Uh, the minimum room requirement size is eight square meters in Nottingham, pretty much across the whole board. But this is 12 square meters, so it's a nice size. Okay guys, so this is a fire alarm control panel. Um, it's basically a fire panel is another way to say it. And in large HMOs, you do pretty much need to put these in. It's a bit of a gray area. You might be able to get away with having the smoke alarms interlinked off the mains. However, this is the correct way to do it. It just does cost a few thousand pounds or more. If we went off the mains, then the whole electric probably would have costed about seven grand. But because we did this, probably cost about 10 grand. But enough of that, let me show you upstairs. So I've showed you downstairs bedrooms number one, two, and three. This is bedroom number four. Let me show you. Okay, so again, this bedroom is roughly 12 square meters. Very nice size, I'm happy with it. And we've got lots of natural light coming in as well. We just went with a company called Sublime Furnishings. They did a great job. Shout outs to Emma and the team at Sublime. This is bedroom number five. 
the game. We've gone for the wall paneling on this. Um, the whole wall panels, they cost me £1,000 for four rooms. So we did this wall paneling in four of the rooms. So £1,000, not bad at all. Okay, so one thing you might notice if you look at a lot of my other projects is the finish on this one is probably my best finish yet. It's put together nicely. All the door frames are matching. The trim looks great. The architraves and the skirting boards are all looking fresh. So I'm very happy with it. We have two back-to-back -back bathrooms. The reason why I did this is just so when tenants are getting ready in the morning, they have a bathroom they can use. Because imagine if we just had two bathrooms for eight people, it's not ideal. So having multiple bathrooms, not only is it one of the regulations, but also it's very useful for the tenant experience. This is the first bathroom. Well, obviously it's the second bathroom in the property, but this is what the bathroom is looking like. So we're just waiting on the LED bathroom mirror to come. That should be coming next week. And the same applies for here. So yeah, we're just waiting on these two mirrors. Okay guys, so this is bedroom number six. This is one of my favorite ones. It just feels so cozy in here. And we have added in a brand new window. So this is part of the extension of the property. And the good thing is when you do an extension, you can choose what window to put in. So obviously we decided to go with these nice, you know, double windows. So um, I'm very happy with them. And we've just gone for the roller blackout blinds. It's so important to put blackout blinds in these HMOs just because it helps people sleep better. And we all know sleep is so important. So that's why we do that. Okay, so I've showed you the first six bedrooms, but this is bedroom number seven. Let's have a look. Oh shit, there's a random guy in here. Not really. That's just uh, my guy Edmund working on some video stuff. But yeah, this is the bedroom. So we went for a nice royal blue color on the feature wall. Um, this is actually a color which is really good for mental health. Um, so obviously we researched the best colors to use for mental health and then we went with it. I'm happy with it. But for me, I'm a big advocate of mental health and having good positive mental health. So for me, this is crucial that we put the right colors in the property because little things have a big impact on people's lives. So for me, it's all about making sure the tenant experience is you know, the best possible experience that we can make it. So yeah, this is bedroom number seven. Let me show you bedroom number eight. Okay, so this is the final bedroom. Obviously we have the bed, we have the nice desk area right here. We have two windows in this bedroom. Now guys, you might be thinking, how can you create a large HMO? I'm gonna tell you, stay tuned. Guys, how to create large HMOs. Now, what you actually need to do is you need to find a property which number one is big enough to do multiple rooms. For example, this one is an eight bed, but without an extension, we could have only done a six bed HMO. So the property itself was big enough to do six bed HMO. We only did a small double story extension. So you need to be looking for properties which are big enough. So I got my planning consultant out before we even owned the property and I said, look, Terry, um, shout out to Terry as well. I'll put his link in the description. You guys can use my planning consultant. I'll hook you up. Basically, he came over and he said, right, what can we do with this property? I want to maximize the GDV, meaning I want to maximize how much it's going to be worth at the end. So we need more rooms. He came out and he said, right, Luigi, you know, I think this would get approved. I think a double story extension would get approved. So that's what we did. We went for the double story rear extension and we applied for eight person HMO with a double story extension, which did get approved. How you guys can do it is initially find a house that's in an area, has bus routes, because when you're doing a large HMO, you need to think of transport links. How can people get to the city center of where the property is located? Also, does it have its own town center strip? This one, it does have a row of shops and it has like a quite a nice little town center. Maybe look for something that's near stuff. So for example, if people work in the town center, they can just walk there. If they work in Nottingham city center, then they can just get a bus there. There's no parking. That's the interesting thing about this deal. So HMOs, they don't need to have parking as long as they're on a bus route and as long as they're in a good location. That's something to keep in mind. So two things there is the size of the house. Can you do any extensions? Can you create more space so you can do a large HMO? And the second thing is location. Is it in a location which, as I said, is close to town centers, city centers, or it has any transport links? Keep those two things in mind. So I've told you a little bit on how you can create large HMOs. I'm also working on a mentorship program which I will be going in depth into people's situations and actually hand holding them through the process of creating their own large HMOs. But right now, I'm gonna tell you 
the numbers on this deal so you can get more of an understanding on what we look for when we're buying these properties how much monthly profit i'm going to make off this one and also how much money we can realistically pull out from this deal when we refinance let's get straight into it so we purchased this property in cash for 176,000 pounds and we spent 110,000 pounds on the refurbishments i do think it's probably going to get valued about 350 to 360 that would be my guess so let's say it does get valued at 350 he gets 150k back out leaves in around 45k the monthly net profit is 750 each and he's able to pull out 76 percent of his initial investment which i do think is very good and pulling that amount in in this current climate that we're in right now but if we got the property valued at four hundred thousand pounds my business partner would be able to pull out one hundred and ninety thousand pounds meaning we'd only be leaving eight thousand three hundred pounds in the deal the monthly profit is slightly less because obviously the mortgage is higher we both walk away with 642 pounds 50 each which is a 92 percent return on investment how i work my joint ventures is if we pull out more money than my partner initially invested then we'd split the difference 50 50. if it does get down valued we'll probably just get another valuation our plan was never to sell it this is kind of a brrr strategy deal however it is nice to know though if we did ever need to sell we could at least get our money back plus a little bit of profit one thing I'd say is just go with a really good planning consultant because if you do have a good consultant, it will make your success rates a lot higher. Hope you've enjoyed this video, guys. Remember to like, comment, subscribe and comment below. If we've missed anything, I'm so sorry. Just let me know and I'll try and address it in further videos.